In this episode, you could win the Iguana Squadron, the monstrous tag for the Nomads faction from Infinity. Also, we're doing a mega competition for Backstagers. Backstagers are our premium account users that get access to a whole host of additional content and tutorials for terrain building, etc. They are also the guys that keep the whole Beast of War project alive. What are they going to get? Well, they can enter a competition that if any of them are backers on the Wolfsong Kickstarter, by entering this competition, you could win your entire pledge for free. So if you're a backer on Wolfsong, you might want to come on over and try out Backstage, because who knows, you could win, win your whole pledge for free. Yes, and if I'm right, you have to be a Backstager when the draw is made. I only have you have to be a Backstager when the draw is made, yes. I only have one thing to say. <laughs> for free? We've already done that. <laughs> Watch the show, guys. Good morning and welcome to The Weekender. Hey everyone. The show where I get to spend 45 minutes with my two best friends in the whole world. Wait, we're friends? When did this happen? Well, you know. Best as buddies. Huh? Best as gamer buddies. Aye. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a ton to cover in the show. I'm going to talk about Volsong, I'm going to talk about Sons of Anarchy, Stormclaw, Infinity, Holiday Games. And then we're going to run down some competition prizes and stuff like that there. Okay. Uh, to kick off, uh, Volsong, as I'd said at the, the very start of the show, if you are a backstager, okay, um, you could enter the competition where you could win your Volsong pledge, the entire pledge, mm -hmm. for free, okay? Um, uh, it's a great prize, and if you haven't checked out the Volsong Kickstarter, you've got to check it out. Mm -hmm. Volsong is like... <laughs> up here on our uh, estimation uh, I have games. one thing to say to you. Halfling Mobsters! Oh, mate, it's got so it's got so good. They've shown off a prototype mm. of what they call it's the Sicilian Pizzeria. Sicilian Pizzeria? It's, it's a, another piece of terrain okay. uh, made from the HDF, and it looks absolutely fabulous. Uh, it is so, so cool. So those Halfling Mobsters, they now have a home. How cool is that? They hang out in the pizzeria. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Volsung is just drawing me in more and more. Like, cause Volsung. Fine, Volsung is drawing me in more and more. Cause I've actually started picking up bits of it. Yeah, but we'll talk about that in backstage. No, no, no. Talk about it now because we have right. a ton of stuff to All talk right, about fine, in backstage. Fine. Well, what I've been picking up so far, I picked up one to test it to actually see if I enjoy painting the minis. Yeah, I've loved it. Have you loved it? Yeah, I love painting. Uh, it was Mary Fearless for the. Uh, the aristocrats. Yes. So now I've went back. Of course, it was the aristocrats. Of course, I like being rather up across, don't you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I've went back. I've picked up one of the mercenaries. It's like a, a little safari chick with a big ass gun, and my favourite character of all, Archibald Armstrong. So I'm waiting for them in the post at the minute. I'm just going to slowly round. Archibald up Armstrong is the guy with the the huge steam power. The huge arm. steam power. Arm. Yes. Imagine what he could do with that, Justin. Yes, I know. I love the fact that you say you like me. I'll pick up her crust and then you follow it up with, oh, I picked up this wee chick with a big ass gun and all. So yeah, she, like, she's done it as a. Of you. Well, yeah. she's, she's done up in uh, the old style safari outfit mm -hmm. from that time period. She's yeah. just really cute and I think she's going to so, be a joy to paint. So she's Jumanji looking? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But it is great. Myself and Andrea are really getting into Volsong now. Um, we, uh, I must show you some of the, the painted miniatures uh, that we have, because we, we've started to actually get a, a, a few painted miniatures, uh, courtesy of uh, my mate Lukash, who was on the show. Mm -hmm. Lukash actually went back uh, to his studio and painted up some miniatures nice. for us and sent them over, and I'm so delighted. But uh, I'm saving it, uh, and I'll show it off uh, another time, because they, they are just... yeah. I just so enamored by that game. If you haven't seen our playthrough of the game, we have a two-part playthrough, and it is hilarious. It's great fun. He loses the plot and the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is because, yes, it was cinematic. Yes, it was beautiful. But you were being a bit of a... No, I was just playing the game, man. <laughs> I know. I, I know. was just playing the game. But I just happened to find a way that... Um, it was a three-player game. This yep. game scales beautifully, so... Uh, I am very confident in saying it's like the tabletop version of Munchkin. That's what it feels like yeah. to me. Yeah. 
You know, because even though I was raging, it was a fun rage. Yeah. I mean, the, look, I don't mean you're raging in any in any bad sense. I just mean it was great crack. It yes, was, but it's, it's it was that brilliant. fun game of rage of mm. what? Come on, really? Yeah. It was. It was really good. You get moments like in um, in Munchkin. You everybody that's played Munchkin will have this moment where they think that they're about to win. And then suddenly it all starts to unravel for them. And then, yep. Now, the only problem with Munchkin is sometimes then it starts to build up and up and up. Uh, Volsung is a bit sharper, a bit quicker than that, and it'll end. Uh, yeah, you and, know, and you have those beautiful cinematic moments to draw you from moment to moment in the game. It also uses a card dynamic that I have to say, um, for me, it's probably my favourite card mechanic. I think, I think I like it even better than the way Malifaux uses its cards. Mm. Um, I, I just love the card mechanic where you can basically, your card becomes your resource and you can spend your cards to do heroic things. Yeah, it, it becomes so, that, that effort that your heroic yeah. characters are putting in. And if you use it too quickly, well, that's fine, but you're leaving somebody else with all the power at the yeah, end. Like, like that really last matter. moment with Sam. <laughs> and him just going, oh, really? Yeah, I'll do that. These, these are the, the playing cards you're talking about. Yeah. It's just like yeah. you play poker or something with. Mm -hmm. just Regular They're just normal standard. playing cards, but they have a beautiful deck of Volsung cards mm -hmm. on the way in the Kickstarter. Um, I've got to say, guys, if you haven't checked it out, go and check out that Volsung Kickstarter. Um, it, it's doing really well. There are up to 300 backers, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it's the sort of game that's never going to have thousands and thousands of backers, but, uh, but maybe as the, each iteration goes. But I've got to say, as tabletop games go, if you're a fan of multiplayer games like Munchkin... You will love Volsung. And it's, if you're a fan of the steampunk genre as well, because it does the steampunk aspect of things beautifully as well. It, it handles steampunk so, so well. Another great miniature that's just come out. Uh, we'll bring up a picture of it here. Check this one out. It's the Tentacled Abomination. Why? Why no? I love tentacles, man. I, don't. I absolutely love tentacles. Mental scarring. Tentacles, yeah. tentacles take me right back to my youth. Do you remember watching 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Yes. Yeah. There was another one. Um, I think it maybe was 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but there was definitely another show where they had this, um, do you know, like a manta ray? Yeah. Yeah. It was a submarine in the shape of a manta ray kind of thing, and it was yellow. That and it used to be able to burst out of the water and, and go like that. I think that is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Isn't that 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Oh, mate, that just takes me right back mm. to my Sundays. As a, as a child, it's all the best TV was on a Sunday when we were kids. Mm. Uh, I just love that. Yeah. I love tentacles. And <laughs> I do love tentacles. It's, it just it takes me back to the octopuses. Yeah. Do you remember the book? We had a book which was like an encyclopedia book, right? Yeah. And there was one page just to terrify us. And it was, of the, it was of the deep. And it showed a diver, okay, with his foot caught in a giant clam. Okay, oh. and he was trying to prize it with his uh, with his spear. Harpoon gun, or and coming that? up behind him was a spider crab. Spider. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting the willies just thinking of the spider crab. The spider crab was the most terrifying thing. Uh, and yeah, it was all the levels of the deep, and here he was trying to get out, and it was. You don't get yeah. that in books anymore. No, you don't get moments of peril. Yeah, where guys are like trying to prize their feet out of. You know, the, these, just, these days, whenever you're down that far, it's just a little ROV bot. Yeah. You know, how can you put an ROV bot into the bother? Cut, well, cut the cable? You've got to check it out. One other, uh, one other game to check out, I think it's just came to Kickstarter, Justin will check and bring it up. As I'll a, find it. Deep Wars. That's the underwater game, isn't it? Uh, yes, if I remember it. We have criminally ne neglected Deep Wars. Really? We need to look into it. Okay, yeah, we've covered it at Gen Con and we cover every release. Mm. But, I mean, I really, really want to try Deep Wars. So you're wanting a, a closer look at it. And I want to convince this man to do an underwater gaming table. And uh, we can see if we can get that to work. What, I think that would be rather cool. What are we thinking? Lost City of Atlantis kind of thing? I don't know. I don't know. I think I would rather do kind of like a coral reef type mm. thing where with the, all the different um, canyons and things like yeah. that. Uh, or if we go, you you could, you want it to, you don't want it to be too deep, otherwise it's just black. <laughs> okay, you want it, uh, you don't want it too shallow either because you could do things like vents, like volcanic vents. I don't know if you get them close to I, the no, surface. I just no. have images. But why you're bound to get volcanic vents well, kind yeah, of close but, to the surface. Oh, you're looking like the... the Dark smoky ones or just the ones it would have to be a dark smoky one. I don't know if you want it to be a black smoker. You gotta black go pretty deep be, for that. Yeah. It might look a bit strange on an ocean board. And there's another another strange thing about an ocean board. 
is you have your sandy surface, you have your coral reefs and stuff like that to break up all your line of sight and to mm -hmm. ensure there's lots of things to move around. You have your uh, plantation, and we want to try and work the plantation with wires and things like that there, so, so it, it looks as if it flows. It kind of raising. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, and then you've got, and then you've got to get a projector to project that wavy sun pattern. I knew you would come <laughs> up with it. That is exactly what we need. We need some way to make the whole thing look kinetic because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just going to look like an alien planet instead yep. of underwater. We, you need we, to find a we way need of caustic effects. Caustic. That's it. Okay, it's so a, basically we're having to fit a new light above this table just to put wavy light down onto it. No, Maybe it has not. to move. It, it, it's... It, yeah, you need to. You need to. It needs to give the the caustic reflections that you would get from. Okay, from I have to see how you water. pull this off. Do you know what we're talking about? Is that when yeah, the it's sun actually hits seeing the, sea. the shimmer of it moving across yeah. over stuff. Yeah, but you would see the shimmer it's on where, the bottom. You'd it's see where the, the sea focuses the light yeah. onto points in it. Like, uh, I, I, I'm just seeing Warren with big tubs of glitter. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tubs of glitter. <laughs> birdie, you're, birdie, you're, birdie. You're saying that stripper glitter. You remember your guy at Salute? Oh God, <laughs> stripper glitter. Well, that escalated quickly. No, I don't remember that. What's the guy, you remember player? there was the giant um, gaming table made out of uh, canvas. Yeah. And you roll it out, it was a big red one. They were doing ancient battles yeah. at big scale. And he was talking about how he made the glittery stuff because it was kind of snowy. He's like, stripper glitter. What is stripper glitter? Do it's, I really want to know what stripper glitter It's glitter that you put on a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. you, you understand the okay. concept of a okay. stripper. You understand the concept not you of glitter. Not okay. you personally. You're not sitting there in a club going, yeah, throwing glitter. Yeah, but I'm just wondering where you would get that stuff from. Do we have to, do we have to fly I, I, it I somewhere? I think there's right? specialist shops okay, online okay. that we can yeah. find. There will be ways and means of doing it. If you have any suggestions for how we would accomplish some kind of um, caustic reflections mm. kind of effect, um, or ideas for an underwater board, mm. post them below because it's something something I'm really interested yeah, in seeing cool. what we can what we can come up to. If to you want to make that. coral, I think we could do it using that um, spray foam. Could you not just buy coral from your local pet store? Yeah, no, you could too possibly heavy. do that, but too heavy. Far too it's heavy. It's okay. expensive. Yeah. It's Is expensive. It? Live okay. rock and stuff, and it'll die. Okay. Um, it will die. So yeah. No, I think he means the stuff that's outside. That's oh, you mean faked. like the, the, the fake Aye. coral and stuff? Aye. Possibly. I don't know how well it would scale. <laughs> if you're really crappy, you had to tend to your gaming board, spraying it every night to keep it alive. Yeah. <laughs> Live! I have a tournament tomorrow! Live! Anyway, so post below any ideas you have. Right, mm. in other gaming news, Justin and I have a huge treat in store for you, my mm. friend. Yes? Sons of Anarchy is getting a yes! game. Who's doing it? Gale Force 9. Again. Yes! It is awesome. Uh, we're going to bring up a little clip uh, from the trailer that they've just released. Right into this world All alone You gotta take your soul Get on your own A crow fast straight A perfect line All the devil's bad Until you die Okay, now you've seen. Yeah, you've seen. Uh, you've seen what it is. Yeah, I've given you a chance to watch the whole thing. They saw a clip. You've seen it all. Right. What do you think? Okay, this looks like it's gonna accurately portray the show. Yeah. I'm a little nervous because the show itself can be quite harsh. With okay. Some of the stuff it without with. being offensive. To me or to any of the viewers, yeah. can you in a nutshell? I've never seen Sons of Anarchy. Right, they well, deal with all aspects of gang life. I put okay. it on, and me and Anna went five minutes into it, and she turned around and says, turn this off. I'm in the final <laughs> Really? Season. She didn't like it? She didn't like Was it. Was it too... It's it, really great. I think it opened yeah. up, I can't remember exactly, but I think it opened up with they were sticking someone in the ground and shooting them or something. Uh, I think I know that episode. Yeah. I think I know that episode, but no, it, it can be quite a harsh show, but the, the fans are hardcore, and I'd say they will buy this game. Yeah. From what I've seen, what you just showed me there, I've seen nine locations on the board, mm -hmm. so I assume you have to control those locations to actually activate the location and get whatever you're doing for it. Yeah. You'll probably be recruiting your prospects, patching them up to being full members, fighting with each other, doing different criminal missions. Mm -hmm. I would say it's going to be a lot of fun, and if... 
Well, if Guildforce Net have proved anything, they have a pedigree now for good board games. Oh, exactly. Super at it. They Spartacus, are super basically, at it. just like at Spartacus, because you guys used to talk about Spartacus all the time, and I avoided playing it. I thought, it can't be that good. It is that good. And the result and is... And the result is, it is good. It is very good. How good? Very, 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 very good. It's awesome, it isn't is good. it? Well, you remember the, the first review we did of it. We thought, all right, we'll sit down, we'll, we'll talk about this wee board game for maybe 15 minutes. One hour later. It's good because yeah, we we did a we did a kind of like a, a recorded first run through, didn't we? For yeah, we, yeah, basically, I had played it a little bit and I took mm. you through some of the mechanics. We had expected maybe 15, 20 minutes. An hour later, we were still chatting and laughing it, about it. It's, it, it's it draws you in so well. It's so good. I'll tell you another one that they've done that is uh, absolutely fabulous, and that is Firefly. Yes, and, and they have Firefly's, expansions coming out for that a lot. There's more expansions coming out for it too. I see another one advertised. Nice. Um, so uh, you see, uh, I haven't. We have, played to sit down. we have to sit down and try Firefly because... Yeah. Firefly is more of a sedate game because you're not having that frenetic fight in the middle. Yeah. But you are having moments where you are just flying past each other, screwing each other, stealing crew members, mm -hmm. setting the law on each other. But it, it feels... Firefly feels like, like the, show. the show. you yeah. know. It, that, it, that's what they capture so well. Yeah. In both of those, it feels like the show. You know, I can't so wait I'm to see what they've do done well with the Sons of Anarchy. Um, we, the difficulty I have is I, I've little ones around the house, and so watching anything that's very gritty becomes complex. Yeah. You know, they go to bed around half seven or so, but I tell you what, by the time they go to bed, sometimes we're just so exhausted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just sitting down to watch anything that's too heavy yeah. becomes yeah. becomes a bit of a chore. Well, I mean, like I'm about to finish up the the final season and. It's a hell of a roller coaster ride watching through it. It you, is worth the watch you, if you get the time. Is this on Netflix? Yeah. Right. The entire thing is on Netflix. It comes with miniatures. Yes. Okay. The miniatures look good. Yeah, they look good. They do reasonably good miniatures mm -hmm. in these box sets. Bear in mind, they are just it is they're, a game piece. they're gaming pieces. Mm -hmm. However, who does cool Hell's Angel type miniatures? I, I want to find out because all I can think of at the moment is taking the Infinity Coom Riders <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and putting the, using them as Maybe the new Pan as well. Yeah. Especially if you're any good at drawing tattoos because they're really badass with the big tattoos are, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. The big gun yeah. and all sticking on. But surely somebody out there, and this is I'm putting this out to the community, is there anybody out there that does really cool Hell's Angel or yeah, gang, gang guys on, gang on choppers mm. miniatures? Because how cool would that be? And why have I never seen those? I, I don't think it's a subject that's ever really been tackled in a war game before, or a board game, that yeah. I've seen. So they, they seem to be breaking new ground with it. But you can get extra points for driving in formation. Uh, <sighs> of course you can. <laughs> of course you can. Yeah, the next thing you'd say is you can get 50 points for running over the granny. Here, you were the one telling me about that show where there's tractors driving in formation. Mm. Formation tractor driving. That yeah. sounds like a rant that we need to leave for another show. <laughs> we have busted our on Beasts of War right. to become one of the biggest um, sources of war gaming, gaming, war gaming entertainment and goodness, mm -hmm. okay? And out there, there's uh, there's a guys, I think they're called the Grass Cutters or something. They're ten times the size of Beasts of War and they drive around in ca grass cutting tractors in formation. On the public roads. On the public right. roads. We've just wasted our time here. Just, well, just that, that, our time Warren, you always look for <laughs> gaming in the gaps, right? Yes. Find those guys as miniature, and that's your gang in the game. But do you know what the grass cutters? I, I, I have. I there was. I think it was last year around April Fools. We were going to put out an April Fool. Uh, BC War was going to Kickstarter mm -hmm. to do farm wars. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the problem was we would have got funded. Uh, well, that was the problem. Would have got funded, and uh, the other the other issue was we went. I went online to look for pictures to use in it. And unfortunately, however it happened, I ended up with a Am I going to have to show this? No, no, <laughs> definitely not. I ended up on a site that had guys on mini tractors, you know, dungarees, unbuttoned. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else on it. You know, it's a little bit of, you know. Well, so I just... Yeah. A little bit of pouting. There was one particular guy that Stop was... Stop that, Justin, you're doing it too well. That was, that was wearing some kind of... Thing that you would I think it was a jock strap. Yeah, you'd smuggle a budgie in it. So it, it was a jock strap of some description. I think. So we get we we geared up to do farm wars, and we had we had our imagery and stuff on there. And each of these guys was going to do battle over Wait the a fields. Minute. Did someone not Photoshop your face onto one of these? Yes, I think somebody did. I think it was <laughs> Sam ultimately that photoshopped. My, was it you? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Right. It wasn't, Sam, no, doesn't, Sam doesn't use it Photoshop. It had to be Sam because the end result was rubbish. Yeah, you it, could see that it was done. If it was you. 
It, it would, would have been something else. Oh yeah, I remember an old story where Lloyd had photoshopped the thing up. Yes, he photoshopped my face onto a uh, pretty girl. Okay? Yes. And he sent it over. I was working overseas at the time. And he sent it over. <laughs> and the people I were working with all set it up as their desktop. And I walked in and I went, oh, she, she's really pretty. <laughs> 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 and I started looking at it and I was thinking, there's something very familiar about that lass. Well, what? Hang on a second. <laughs> and it was me looking back. It was photoshopped so well, you you would never have known. If you ever needed was... proof that people are attracted to people that look like them, it's that, him looking at her going, that, she's really pretty. Yeah, I re she's really, really pretty. Yeah. You know, and it was, oh, of course it was That was me. beautiful. Anyway, Songs of Anarchy is is on the way. I've got to say, I, I'm looking forward to, to trying it out and to, to see what it's like. Cause but are you going to watch the show? No. You're just going to play the game. You don't I, need to. I like, one of the great things is, um, I played Spartacus before I watched the show. I never watched the show and I still love it. Loved it. Um, I've paid, uh, played Firefly. I've only kind of watched the show. Mm. I love the dynamics How can you have only kind of watched the show? You borrowed my set of Firefly about five years ago and I haven't seen it since. Yeah. Oh, so that's where my set came from. Uh, I, I, uh, Do you have my set? Uh, no, all right, worry. okay. <laughs> I thought I'd give it away. Um, I watch it once a year, so it's, it, it, it's, it, I'm getting there. It doesn't matter. It's Netflix. Oh, uh, yeah, it's all on Netflix now. So, um, uh, Sons of Anarchy. I, do you know what? I might get the chance to, to watch the show. I'm going on holiday now. I, so I would advise, uh, at the very least, watch the first season. Yeah. Because the first season is kind of light. It doesn't get too harsh. It, it gets heavier. Start of season two, you're instantly in, and it's like right in the face. All right, so it's a bit like Breaking Bad. It starts to get, it starts to it get really quite a lot darker as it, yeah. as it goes through. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, stay tuned for Sons of Anarchy. We're going to take a very quick break. Um, after the break, we're going to be talking a little bit about Stormclaw, and then we have Carlos in the studio from Corvus Belly. And welcome back. Right. Other... I don't know if it's big news or just interesting news. Stormclaw, okay? Stormclaw is, um, should be in the White Dwarf this weekend, okay? So you guys that are getting your, uh, going into your games workshops and picking up White Dwarf will know, probably know a lot more than we do right now, okay? I'm always a bit reluctant to talk about the games workshop releases, not for any other reason other than the fact that we're talking about stuff that we don't know everything about, mm. okay? So um, I, I need to put this big caveat that we don't really know exactly what Stormclaw is. So we're stage. working from rumors. We're working from rumors, leaked photographs, things like that, okay? Um, as it becomes more clear, we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk about it. But if anything that we say is wrong or whatever on this, you'll, you'll forgive us, but we are just working with the, the scant information that we have. Mm -hmm. We thought originally we were looking at a Space Wolves mm -hmm. and Orcs starter set. Yeah. Okay. I'm not so sure that that's the case. It might be the case. I'm not sure. It, Dark Vengeance, and before that was, what was before Dark Vengeance? Battle for McCrag. No, Battle for McCrag was two before that. There was, there was one in between Assault on Blackreach. Uh. Each one of those, McCrag, Blackreach, Dark Vengeance, mm -hmm. um, had all the sculpts and miniatures done from scratch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they were push fit and oh, so yeah, on. Oh, yeah, clippy and so stuff. Forth. Yeah. Um, so you didn't need glue or anything to, to put them together. You just buy it, clip them out, put them together. Mm -hmm. They're very much geared as the starter introductions into Warhammer 40k. From what we can gather of Stormclaw, okay. It's off the shelf, okay? It's what, all what? off the shelf, except for one character. I believe it's just one What, you one mean character. sprues? Yes. Okay. It's okay. all sprues just from existing products. So the Space Wolves are, are just the existing, uh, the, the existing the sprues. Box. Yeah, and the Orcs are all just the existing sprues. Mm. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, just ignore it. Um, but... It, that, certainly from everything that we're seeing, that's what it looks like. Mm. They're also uh, describing it as part of this ongoing campaign. 
and the name of the campaign uh, escapes me at the moment. Right. So at this stage, I don't actually know whether this is a starter set or not. So I'm told that Dark Vengeance is now dropping off the, 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 the websites line. and stuff like that, and they can't right. reorder it. So if it's a replacement for Dark Vengeance, okay, yeah. um, is it going down the line of it where it's not push fit, and it is going to start using off-the-shelf products and bundling them in and selling them that way? Maybe, or maybe they're using starter packs now as campaign packs. You know, so their starter pack will be something that's off the shelf. They can bring out a new one, say, every six months. Mm -hmm. And whenever a new player is coming in, they're coming in to the game with that new component of the campaign pack. So you reckon that this could be uh, a way of speeding up the, the release schedule again? Possibly. So you're not waiting every two years for a starter pack. Your starter pack but you're could... Not, but you're not waiting because... Oh, hang on. He could be onto something here. Yeah, but you're not waiting. That's the reason. Well, who, who who actually plays the game wants to keep buying starter packs over and over again? No, no, no. What 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 he may be getting at could be entirely wrong. But what he could be getting at here is, um, orcs are just out the New York Codex and the New York Minis. Yeah. Yep. Space Wolves are coming out next exactly. by all accounts. So we've we've been expecting it now for exactly. a while. Here you have what would effectively be a starter pack. Yeah. That has orcs and space wolves for the two latest armies. Yeah. Come Christmas, another one. Blood Angels will probably be out, mm -hmm. and, and someone else. Who else would probably be out? Um, Tyranids, maybe. No, Nids have already been done. Possibly Dark Eldar. Possibly. Whoever it is, yeah. I think uh, Tyranids were done before Dark Eldar, if, if I remember okay. correctly. So, but say Blood Angels and somebody else, mm -hmm. then. You have another a new starter campaign pack. Campaign pack. So you're selling is. to not only the new people coming in, but the people who are already in, mm -hmm. who want to continue with the campaign. Well, for me that would work, because I, I would just double up with a buddy every every release and go. Yeah, it's a possibility. You, you want them, and I'll have them. Fair well, it's, it's only a wild theory on my part, complete speculation. What do you guys think? Well, I think that's a very interesting way to go. Um, but I'm I don't, not. But I'm not in favour of that if it phased out the starter box and there was no actual starter box. Well, it, it takes that would out, be the starter box. Yeah, so every it takes time out their overhead this, of sculpting new stuff for every new starter box. So if they, yeah. let's say they went that way, you think it would be off-the-shelf armies, yeah. but there would still be rule books and stuff like yes. that? Yes, yes. Uh, Stormclaw contains, um, I believe, uh, a, little, the, a miniature a version book. of the campaign book and apparently, possibly, I don't know yet, uh, maybe a miniature version of the rule book. We know that miniature versions have been created because there was a box set yep. uh, created which had all the miniature versions of the books in it. So we know that they've been doing the mini versions. They could be in that box. Now, from a from a salesy point of view, though, I mean, I, it might make sense. For example, if you spend a lot of time tooling up for a starter box, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and say your intake of new players is dropping off. Yeah, maybe that starter box didn't get received very well. Yep. You spent an awful lot of money on that starter box, exactly. whereas your other players aren't who are into the game probably, are never probably going to buy, gonna buy well, it. Some will, this, they, some will they, because yeah. they want the new minis. This they're appealing Not to all. both sectors, new players and I, existing yeah. players. I gotta say, I quite like the idea too. I'm a big fan of leanness, you know, mm. and this feels lean to me. You know, it's mm -hmm. a original. First, you you could either say it feels lean or it feels cheap, right? Now, when I first saw it, I thought, oh. That's a bit of a pity that they're, that they're not going to town and doing the, the stuff that they, they normally do. Bearing in mind, we're only going off the information that we've got at the moment. They could well be going to town uh, on it. Mm -hmm. But I thought that that's a bit of a pity um, that they yeah. weren't. But then I got time to think about it for a while and I thought to myself, no, this, this makes perfect sense to me. Well, it makes excellent business sense. You know, it's um, A... It's a better representation of the, of the hobby because you you get the kids to buy glue and stuff like that. They'll put it all to glue it all together anyway. Yeah. I would say you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that bought Dark Vengeance or um, Black Reach before that and didn't actually glue the miniatures together. Oh yeah. You know any kid that's going to walk into a Games Workshop is going to walk out with a yeah. thing of glue and a pair of clippers. And if they do it this way, it means that those new kids who are coming in are coming in on something that everyone is excited about at the time. So yeah. there will be support for them from the mm -hmm. community. Um, I, I quite like it. I quite like it. Again, I'm 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 annoyed that we don't know more about it at this mm. stage because it's very hard to make firm opinions on all of this stuff whenever you don't really know exactly what they're up to. Mm. But if that's the case, 
I think it. I think it's a good idea, and I quite like the idea of them pushing forward new campaigns or pushing a campaign forward, mm -hmm. maybe twice a year. I can't see any reason why they couldn't. You know, all, all they need to do, right? They need to estimate the sales for that box, right? Mm -hmm. Fifty thousand Space Hulks uh, were bought, sold out very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, they might estimate that something like this would sell through fifty thousand. Okay. Okay. So they order up the components to create a, a standard run of 50,000 of these through, aim to have them sold through mm -hmm. by the time it comes to Christmas, and then by Christmas, they've done another one. Mm -hmm. Because they're pumping out books. They are pumping out content mm -hmm. like it is nobody's business at yep. the moment. You know, that company is on fire when it comes to content. We they cannot are. keep up with it. It's, it's so frenetic. The other thing is, if they're not having to do all that tilling on the new stuff, that mm -hmm. frees them up creatively to do other work. That was my other thought on this. You know, the time that they would have spent creating and uh, you mm -hmm. know modeling for a starter set. Yep. Um, Even just the art design for boxes, internal yeah, instructions. That time could be spent on actual new releases, and then those new releases become. The starter set or become a driver of the starting set. Yeah. What better way to sell the orcs that you've just released and the space wolves you're about to release than introducing everybody that's new to the orcs and the space wolves? Ta -da. Come Christmas, what better way to sell your blood angels and your tyranids or whatever it is that we end up mm -hmm. having by then than to have a starter set that is full of blood angels and tyranids? And with you taking out that overhead of creating the new sculpts for it, all you have to do is take those, put them in a box, and maybe design up some nice art for that yeah. particular box. Because would, they will have the these, statistics. Would these end up overlapping? And you might go into a GW and see two or three different sets? I don't know. I, uh, Games Workshop seem to, to me anyway, to work on the principle of um, clarity, a clear cutness, okay? Because mm. if I walked in, there was three sets to choose from, suddenly I'm, I, I'm presented with a decision to make. I have a feeling. Sometimes decisions can get in the way of actually taking something. I have a feeling that they will run it as a fixed run, mm. okay? When it's sold, it's sold. Yep. If it hasn't sold, they'll pull it from their own stores and shred it, and then you'll only find it in independence. The way you would still find the odd copy of Black Reach mm -hmm. um, or even McCrag around some of the little yeah, independent stores. The other thing is, if they have to pull and shred it, they're only out the cost of making the box and packing the box. Yeah, because all the it. other stuff can go back into the inventory because it's standard product. Exactly. Well, save for the, the single sprue guys. Well, that's but, that's yeah. a key point, isn't it? It Being is. able to take your plastics or whatever is in the box back Aye. out and just put it back into other boxes well, is really the, the, the proportion, would be real the, plus. The proportion of unsold stock might be so small that, it, it, that it's irrelevant. Or they could have a real stinker on their hands, like Dreadfleet. Yeah. You, know, you take Dreadfleet, didn't sell pretty much at all. Dead plastic in a box. Um, nothing they could do with it. But we know, Absolutely uh, nothing they could do with it. But we discussed that internally recently. We did it's not like Dreadfleet because it's not something they're coming out with one box and going, we're never going to do this again, we're never going to expand on this universe, we're never going to do anything for this. How they thought that would ever sell when they said, here's a box we're going to do nothing with. Well, they, they had, there were probably thoughts within the studio that the big boxes, they're exciting, they're, they're self-contained right, games. Right, shiny, gimme. Everybody wants to buy them, you know. Until you say, we're never going to do anything again with this. Yes, which is a real pity. Which is real pretty. It, it, pity if Dead, Dead Fleet, Dread Fleet had it been supported, who knows? I think you got it right, Dead Fleet. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, Stormclaw, due out um, very soon. Um, very interesting. Um, I think uh, we could have basically have just wasted your last uh, 15 minutes there of talking complete and utter sh sugar. It well, doesn't um, matter, it was interesting. <laughs> but if that is the way they're going, mm. I, I think it's interesting. I think it shows leanness on mm -hmm. their part. And I think it, it fits with the kind of the vibe I'm getting from Workshop at the moment, which is really high tempo. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. And then change, you know, constant change, constant excitement. They don't feel like that plodding company that was just doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. They do start. They are starting to feel like they have seriously raised the tempo inside that studio. Um, we can only wait and see. I, I, th I think I think we could be looking at good things here. It'll feel very different for that for us that we're always looking to the new box set because it was big value and there was always new stuff in it that you wanted to see. However, from a recruitment perspective, based on what workshop are seeing, because bear in mind they'll have all the stats. 
they may have found that Dark Vengeance sold spectacularly well for the first year, mm. um, but then maybe sales go through the absolute floor because any kid that's walking in to a games workshop with his mate, because yes. remember, word of mouth is a much bigger seller for war game products now than it has ever been in the past, thanks mm -hmm. to the internet um, and forums, ourselves, etc. Mm -hmm. People are now going in and saying, I want the new army. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I'm the excited key. about your latest stuff. Yeah. No, 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 I don't, I don't want that thing that's been exactly. sitting on the shelf for months. Yeah. Yeah, that is the key point. Nobody's talking about a box set that's two years old. Mm. Yeah. Whereas this, there's a new set coming, there's hype, hype, exactly. hype, and the new hype's mm. arriving just as the sales of the last one maybe died off. Exactly. Yeah. And they don't have an incredible overhead for it. Yes, mm. if they're creating a new mini or two new minis for the box just to make it something shiny for you, yeah. there's a bit there, but perhaps nothing too severe. Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens, but um, um, Workshop, I'm kind of impressed, actually. If this is the route you're going down, I think that's a very, very shrewd move. Okay, we're going to take a very quick break. After the break, we've had Carlos from uh, Corvus Belly in the studio with us now for a couple of days. Um, Justin, you got an opportunity to sit down, to them, down with them to talk about I've got Gen all Con. the dirt on what he's getting up to over the next wee while. Yeah? That is going to be one very busy man. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, stay tuned after the break. Justin is going to grill Carlos, and then we'll be back after that. So, hi guys. As you can see, I'm joined by Carlos from Corvus Belly. We've had him over this week filming a lot of Infinity stuff. And if you know our relationship with Corvus Belly and Infinity in general, you pretty much know what's going to be coming right in now. So, Carlos, what have you got for us? Because uh, you have what you've got in the can with us, but I'm sure you have some other special stuff coming up. Uh, yes, well, as I was telling you, these are very exciting days. I mean, lots of activity, especially this time of the year. Yeah. Uh, so, I... I'm here in Northern Ireland with the guys of Visual War filming the Operation Einstorm Week, and and we have just finished. Okay, this that that is done. But uh, now I'm coming back home to Spain, and I have lots of stuff to do. Because first we have the interplanetary tournament, big wars here, interplanetary tournament. Okay. This used to be, this used to be a regional tournament in Vigo which mm -hmm. is the city next to Corvus Belli yep. HQ, okay? And there was this gaming club, name is Bozos. Uh, we, uh, Corvus Belli have a very friendly relation with them. In fact, mm -hmm. two persons from Esbozos work at Corvus, at Corvus Belli. Mm -hmm. And they were making this annual regional tournament. Yep. And this year, Corvus Belli got into supporting massively the, the staff. Now it's more like a Corvus Belli and Esbozos official event. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make the, the, the official annual event for Infinity, the big time, you know. So th th this is your big hit tournament of the year. Yes, uh, we're, we're looking forward to that, to have mm -hmm. an, a huge interplanetary event every year, mm -hmm. and that will be like the, the, the moment that if everyone, if everyone wants to, to meet Corvus Belli and mm -hmm. to enjoy the game, a celebration of Infinity, awesome. Uh, awesome. that will happen. So, we're getting players from the USA, players from Russia, players from the UK, lots of Spanish players, um, mm -hmm. mostly from Madrid, I guess. So, this is going to be pretty much everybody who can make it to this event that loves Infinity is coming together. Yes, awesome. I, I think that mostly nearly 80 players. Whoa, what? 80 players, that means uh, <laughs> making 40 tables, providing Infinity Terrain. All wow. the partners from Corvus Valley has been very generous supporting the mm -hmm. event, uh, putting their, their terrain, very mm -hmm. necessary for playing Infinity. Yeah. And, and the people from Esbozos have been assembling terrain for days now, I know. <laughs> so uh, they, they've just chained each other to a desk and just went, right, we're not leaving till we have this all built. Yes, it's, it's huge. I mean, the logistics for such a big event like this is, are, are mm -hmm. huge. So. Uh, the winner of this event, uh, <laughs> well, the, the final prize, which was recently revealed, will be a, a real scale uh, Spitfire rifle <laughs> from, from from Infinity, a weapon from Barnosiania. Yeah. yeah. So I have seen some images of the of the rifle, and it's looking awesome. Okay. Thing, so most tournaments, it's oh, you won, pat on the head. Here's a shiny trophy. For Infinity, it's just no, no, no. You won the this uh, Infinity tournament, right? 
Here's a Spitfire. Have fun getting that through customs. I don't know if the Spitfire really shoots. Uh, <laughs> we, went, we may test it with someone from the staff. Like, so oh, no, no, it's not shooting anything. So okay. the, the wooden spoon, whoever does worse in the tournament, gets to be put in front of a wall with the Spitfire. <laughs> I make the silhouette <laughs> of the guy. So, a uh, big prize here, uh, lots mm -hmm. of activity. Also, yep. um, well, the Operation Ice Storm box will be available uh, for the players at the tournament. Very, very, very early release for them, a mm -hmm. privilege from, from, from Corvus Valley to the players. So that uh, is huge. Right. I mean, okay. they will be probably the first persons who, who can open the box. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> guys, if you're going to this tournament, break open your piggy banks. You're going to need it. <laughs> So, uh, apart from this, it's a big infinity event. Mm. Uh, we will care a lot about the, the international. <laughs> if people come from the USA to, to visit Corvus Valley, we yeah. have to be really nice with them. <laughs> they deserve Ice Storm and lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, apart from that, uh, well, a seminar will be hosted, uh, a bilingual seminar, because I probably have to speak in Spanish and in English so, at the same sentence, time. Sentence English, sentence Spanish, sentence English, sentence Spanish. <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare. Uh, we will show lots of previews. We will reveal some information about third edition. We will show never seen designs of upcoming miniatures, uh, mm -hmm. revealing information. But we cannot reveal any, everything <laughs> at the Interplanetary Tournament. This year it has lots of events, lots of mm -hmm. events during the year. So we have to, to be very careful about here we will reveal this, here we will reveal that, mm -hmm. because it's, it's the way we are promoting yeah. Uh, yeah. Corus Valley Infinity with third edition. Okay. So we have a lot of activity. Okay, so that's the interplanetary tournament. That's the interplanetary Who, tournament. Who's next in the lineup? Next in the lineup, probably just two weeks after that, I will have to get a plane and go to the USA, to mm -hmm. Indianapolis, Genko, Indianapolis. Okay, awesome. the biggest event, the biggest event of, of wargaming and stuff mm -hmm. uh, in the planet. Huge. Uh, you haven't been there. No, no. I want to go. You I have want to go. go. Beast of War. I know that you have American agents the, making the, the Beast yeah, of well, War videos. We have, uh, I think we have three people at Gen Con this year. I think we have okay. Wild Chevy. I think we have Don and Gianna doing more videos for us. So, yes, guys, we will have coverage at the event. Anyway, I cannot yeah. recommend you enough to go to, to, to see Indianapolis by yourself. Mm -hmm. around, uh, it's been, it has been a great experience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. There yeah. you can imagine a huge pavilion with all the exhibitors. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and selling the most exclusive offers, awesome stuff, early yeah. release only for Gen Con stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there is another huge pavilion where you can play the World Cup inside that pavilion with <laughs> lots of Wargaming fans playing every game, every mm. game you, you, that you have just reviewed. Everything we have uh, on the back shelves here. Piece of War is there. It's, it's incredible. It's awesome, amazing. Awesome. So it's, it's huge. And for Corvus Valley, it's a huge effort to go there. And if you go, if we go there, we go with, with everything, you know. So yeah. we are taking Operation Ice Storm there. And all the boxes that we are taking there will have the, the exclusive pre-order miniature. So uh, yes. uh, American fans or lucky Gen Con visitors will be able to get the Operation Ice Storm set uh, there with the pre-order miniature mm -hmm. immediately on your hands. Yeah, uh, so apart get there early. Apart from that, Beast of War has already previewed the Penthesilea, yeah. oh my gosh, special so edition, Gen Con edition, Penthesilea, the, the bootleg edition for Penthesilea. Mm -hmm. How that happened? Because uh, at some point of this year we were planning how do we make an special miniature for Gen Con. Yeah. And after talking, uh, we realized uh, something happens with Gen Con. Just a few blocks away from, from where the event is happening, mm -hmm. there's also a huge motor uh, event, uh, a parade of, of bikes, uh, of Harley Davidson bikes, bikers. I see what you've done. Uh, we, I've seen that uh, in the early years, and, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful, it's very impressive, lots of bikes and, and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we thought we might make a bootleg edition of the biker character from Aleph, mm -hmm. in a, you know, because the new cone bike is very, very Harley Davidson style, very yeah. badass, very American also. So that would be like Penthesilea going to Indianapolis in, in a bike. So th this is her on vacation. Yes, it's like... A special Indianapolis motor event, Penthesilea. Yeah. We awesome. like the idea awesome. very much. As, as, as the, for the being, miniature turned out fantastic. Yes, there's some easy rider thing going on with the color scheme, also mm -hmm. with a miniature. So we, we like very much the idea. Yeah, but that, that's not all. Okay, so <laughs> what we have so far, you have Ice Storm. Ice Storm. Yeah. You have Penthesilea. Yes. 
What else? And suddenly, because I was telling you that there is this Spitfire made yeah, for yeah. the Interplanetary Tournament, I yeah. know that the, the manager of Corbuselli, Fernando, had a very relation, a very friendly chatting with the guys from Artifacts. Yeah, the guys who made it. Yes, and Artifacts has a cosplayer uh, whose name is Tabitha Lyons. Yes, yes. When she received the, the designs of the weapons, she liked very much the, the Infinity designs and mm -hmm. she decided by herself to make her own Infinity cosplay mm. and the chosen design was the Neoterra Balls. Oh. So uh, we were happy with it. Ah, the show photos when you have done it, but uh, more chatting lead to, hey, why don't you come to, with, uh, to Gen Con mm -hmm. with us for promoting Infinity? I and I was like, yeah. so cool, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Fernando stared stare at, the, at the emptiness uh, for a few seconds and he said, let's make a miniature that will be Tabitha Lyons cosplay it <laughs> as, yeah, as, That's brilliant. As a new Terra Vault, uh, and let's sell some limited copies just for Gen Con because it's like a, a, a great idea. Yeah. So that miniature will be very limited, uh, available at Gen Con, and only during those four days at Gen Con, yeah. uh, I think that people, if they like it, they can get it on the Corvus Leon Online store. We're, you're just giving me more and more reasons to raid my bank account and visit the States for this. Yes. Because you've got <laughs> Ice Storm. You've got Tabitha Lyons on stand, looking absolutely stunning as a Neo Terra Bolt. You have a miniature of her. You have Fantasy Leia. There can't be much more of this. Uh, well, there is. <laughs> 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 there will be like four tournaments uh, being played uh, in, usually on the mornings. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually uh, uh, tournaments for Infinity players, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, standard uh, with different variations of points. There will be also an invitational tournament. Okay. And we have Angel Giraldez coming with us uh, this year. Angel Giraldez is the official painter uh, or head painter of Corvus Belli. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he will be uh, on our booth, constantly painting miniatures so people can get approach and, and see how he paints. Yep. He will be hosting master classes. The master classes will be one of them will be how to paint Operation Ice Storm. Okay, so if you just picked up your box, you can go to the master class and sit down and learn a few tricks of how to paint. Yes, it's very logical. Go from <laughs> this to this. Mm -hmm. Then I know that where there will be more four master classes. One will be uh, from a Giraldez. For painting, one will be how to paint faces, mm -hmm. okay? One will be how to paint oxide and leather, mm -hmm. okay? One will be how to paint non-metallic metal, okay? And the last one will be uh, how to paint a panel fusilier from mm -hmm. the Operation Ice Storm box. That, that, I know that that master class provides the miniature, so people who go at that master class will have the, a new oh, that's, sculpture that's cool. of, the, of the fusilier. Very cool. So, very cool. Apart from that, I know that Angel is going to announce something at Gen Con. I know that he is carrying, de de delivering this uh, personal project of his. Okay. We don't know what it is. I know, but... So, <laughs> he's, so the, he's, the master painter of Corvus Belly has a secret project that no one knows about that and has, it's being revealed at Gen Con. That has been kept as a secret and he will reveal it at Gen Con. He's okay. not revealing now because he wanted to be at Gen Con because it's so special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, lots of, of yeah. stuff happening. Okay. And Can there be anything else? Yeah, the seminar, because... <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to, to go to Gen Con, like going for the gold medal. It's a huge effort for mm -hmm. the company. So you have to make uh, all the American fans and getting all the American feedback in, and, and, and really revealing stuff. Yeah. So the seminar that we will reveal lots of stuff of third issue the rules, how do, how does it go, this and this mm -hmm. and this. Yep. Also lots of uh, well designs never seen before, what is coming, what yep. will happen. A very revealing seminar. Awesome. As not not the only one. They, they, we have one at the Interplanetary, also one at Gengon. And later in August, at the end of August, I know that Gutierrez Lusquinos, the writer of the book, mm -hmm. the books is coming to Washington DC to the Nova Open, a huge okay. event that is happening happening there. That they make a big infinity. So tournament. another seminar of stuff. Another probably another <laughs> revealing, very revealing stuff. Yeah. And then well, pff, more things happening later this year. Another infinity theme week for Visual War. Yeah. And, we have and, that in the can now. Yes. Uh, but another one. Oh, another <laughs> yes. one. Yes. Okay. This I didn't know about. More work. <laughs> More editing. Bye. The the one I have already the this already done is about Operation Einstein, but there okay. will be later a one of our third edition. I really see. revealing with videos, with really visual stuff, so. lots of stuff third cool. edition. And uh, 
Um, in October also, uh, this, is, this event, Feast of Blaze, happening in Denver, Colorado, at the first week of, the second week of uh, October. Okay. And, and I will go there and make another seminar, revealing lots of stuff. So this is the year we burn out Carlos. Yes, yes. Quite simply. You are yes, going to yes. be run ragged, my good sir. Yes, I will make points of flight and... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, that is why we are like uh, revealing little, little, little drops of information because we yeah. have to fill the whole year because the whole maneuver of yeah. promoting... So basically everybody who's making the effort to come and see you guys is mm -hmm. getting something. You're, yes, not, you're yes. not just going, blah, everybody, one shot. It's going, okay, you guys are getting something nice, you guys are getting something nice. Thank you for making the effort. You guys are getting something nice. Well, this has to be like that. We're promoting Infinity Third Edition, which is very, very important for us. Mm -hmm. And we are working very hard. And people in, in, in the company, packaging in the miniatures, and we have to really make this work. I mean, it's, it's a company that is growing and we have to make it better. We have to put our best on it. Well, Carlos, from what I've seen, since you first came on to Beast of War with us, Infinity has done nothing but grow. Yes. It's done nothing but become <laughs> a lot better. Yes. Guys, if you're going to Gen Con or any of these events, make sure and stop and say hello to Carlos. See what you can squeeze out of him leak-wise. And uh, if you get the chance, get to them at Gen Con because it sounds as if there's a lot of cool stuff to pick up. Get to some of those master classes from Angel Heraldes because oh. they sound magnificent. Yes. And keep an eye on Infinity, guys. They're going from strength to strength. And we here at Beasts of War cannot wait to see what they do next. Carlos, it's been a pleasure having you across for filming. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be with you, Justin. We'll see you again later, guys. So, busy guy, that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if any of you guys are going to Gen Con, we have our uh, we have the Beast of War team at Gen Con. We have Gianna, Don, and Wild Chevy. Mm. They're going to be doing the coverage for us at Gen Con this year. I can't wait to see it. And uh, by all accounts. We will be at Gen Con next year. Yeah, uh, and yeah. What, uh, I, I hadn't heard about this. I heard to hear this from Carlos. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, we 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 um we we will be at Gen Con next year by all accounts. We are getting the funding in place and yes. we're we're gonna come over and everybody's telling us how horrendous it is to get through uh, security. So I have no idea how we're gonna get through with six cameras. So well, you're, you're the one that always gets searched or scanned when we go through airport security. Every time, Justin. Every, every time. Every I, time. I, did, I walk through looking like this and it's just like, morning officer, bye officer. Warren walks through, ah oh, crap, not again. But that's because he's afraid if he searches you, he'll catch something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but just, yeah. just, just before we get too far into the Gen Con, I mean, if anybody's gone to that other tournament as well, uh, yeah, the, the planetary tournament. The interplanetary yeah. tournament. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd interplanetary. Love, I, I'm sorry, I just love the idea. Instead of just going, plonk, there's a trophy, they're going, here, have a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, how cool is that? Yeah, we're talking about costumes. How the hell are you getting that home? I mean, yeah. Well, I like... the beauty of it is it's in Spain, so mm. it'll be easier to get it home than to get it out of the States. So. True. True. So if you're there, drop some pics. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Tell it. If you're at the interplanetary tournament, make sure and send us some photographs of that because we'd yep. really, really love to see that. Yeah. Also, so. the one thing we'll have to think of if we're going to Gen Con next year, mm -hmm. backstage or meetup. Well, funny you should say that. We're going to have a general Beast of War meetup this year oh. at Gen Con. So Wild Chevy, um, right. Dawn and Gianna, and uh, some others, Red Ben, one of our contributors, are all going to be there. And they're on the website at the moment organizing just a general Beast of awesome. War uh, meetup. So if you fancy coming along to that, um, get, hop on over onto beastofwar.com, go into the forum where they're, they're talking about the, the meetup, and definitely uh, they'd be more than happy to, to get everybody together that's a, you know, a viewer or a contributor or one of the Beast of War community members. Get together, have a drink, have a laugh. Hmm. Sounds and fun. Um, who knows, you know, if if we can get a laptop or something set up with a bit of Wi-Fi, but live we'll, stream to them. We'll maybe hop on and uh, do, uh, do a meet and greet with you guys and say cool. hi as well. So a big group um, photo, a big group photo <laughs> with us on a laptop, all squeezed together. <laughs> We'd look like Zod um, <laughs> in the. Well, what, what I, did you I call know. the prism of, that they were trapped in? <laughs> the Phantom Zone. The Phantom Zone. Me, me, Lloyd, just all our heads squeezed together. Now so. that would be torture for an eternity. <laughs> anyway, so um, 
A great interview. We have some amazing content coming up for uh, Infinity. You'll want to stay tuned for that. You'll not have to wait very long. Mm. Right. Um, to close the show, I'm going on holiday. Uh, uh, I love Hallelujah. So for the next two weeks, yep. um, I'm not going to be on the weekenders. So you're left with these guys and whatever poor souls that they can drag in on the show. So Sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll find something. Probably just stick a mannequin down. Yes, you'll find something. You can get a you can get a cardboard cut out of Elvis and just <laughs> have him here where I would sit, and he'll go ha ha ha. No, it's um, it's uh, been two years mm. since we've had a break, um, so I couldn't take it any longer. Yep. God, I was crazy, and a feeling came along me like a tidal wave. Need some, <laughs> need some downtime, I know. So we uh, we we I managed to. Andrea has very kindly agreed to go camping. Um, so I have a very, very excited little girl who is running around yes. out of her mind with excitement yep. at the prospect of going camping. We're going down to my favourite part of the world, County Wicklow, mm -hmm. uh, just south of Dublin, um, which is very fortunate for me because it means I don't have to fly there. I can drive down. But it is, it's, it's called the Garden of Ireland, right. and it's the most... So just wonderful, beautiful, natural, beautiful beauty everywhere. place I've ever seen in my life. I, I adore it. You know, it, it's almost like my heart belongs there. It's just uh, where's this uh, Wicklow. Wicklow? It's it's. I cannot tell you just how much I love it. There's a great little gaming group down there as well. Um, some of the Beast of War community members are, are down in Wicklow town, mm -hmm. and they have a, a little shop that they've gradually been supporting and building up. And I found out it's now moved to even bigger premises. So Excellent. this is its third move. You'll, so it you'll seems have to, to get us some really pictures. Well. I will. I'm going to pop in. I'm going to try and pop in some night and see if I can get a game of something on mm. uh, for a bit of crack. But um, I have a question for you guys. Now, it might be too late for me, but um, some of you guys that are going to holiday late in the summer. When you're short on space, now myself and Andrew are short on space because we've got a ton of camping gear. We have a yep. tent the size of a bungalow, yeah. um, so we don't have an awful lot of space. And I was chatting to Andrew, I said, you know, well, maybe we'll take down a game or something, you know, that we can sit in the evening when the kiddies are sleeping, yep. and if we're awake enough, we, we can try and play it. Mm -hmm. And I started to think to myself, what do you take down? A miniatures game... They'll get lost, you'll roll over in yeah. your sleep and get a zombie up your butt. And it's a lot of... It feels like a bit of hassle. You know, we want something that we can... Bring out quickly. It doesn't have a lot of setup time. Mm. Pack away quickly, mm. and at the same time, I want something that feels narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise we'd just take Connect Four. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. it's um, a lot of games require more than two players before it starts to feel fun. Aye. and that's why I like the idea of if we could do something that was almost cooperative. Because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but playing a competitive game between a couple gets very personal very quick no that wasn't what i was going to say it gets very boring oh okay so it does because it's um why because i, I play chess with anna quite a lot that's yeah. chess that's that's a completely ball, different ball game do, uh, do you play chess yeah? yeah does she ever beat you yeah she does now she didn't yeah. know how to play and i've taught her and i have now been beaten <laughs> maybe I, it wasn't just the fact that it gets personal you know you, a couple they know each other they'll, they'll play it oh uh, it's just it lacks it, it, it lacks the conversation, whereas something mm. that's collaborative, mm -hmm. where you're trying to eat, get to the same goal, you're more inclined to talk and stuff during it. Whereas if you're playing competitively, you're not really talking because you're concentrating on trying to beat the yeah, other. I think yeah. you're right, actually. It depends on what you're playing. For example, we've recently tried the two-player version of um, Risk. Yeah. And I'm myself. And it was a very different experience to us collaborating on the... We were just playing on the Xbox, but we could sit down for like three hours... Yeah. And sitting chat and, and chatting, will we will we invade this? Mm -hmm. we invade, how many men will we leave here? Are we, we going to go there? Yeah. Where do you think we should conquer next? It was a constant flow of com conversation. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you are fighting against each other, it's, you're right, it kind of just... It kills the drops. conversation. And the, the whole thing for a, for a holiday is, you know, I want to converse with Andrea. I want to... You want a I little want downtime to, I want to reconnect. I want to laugh with her. I want to chuckle with her. You mm. know, it's... Um, and, and going... All out on something that's that's very competitive, mm -hmm. didn't may not do that. Yeah. Now, options that I was thinking of, Munchkin's kind of out because it's not fun with two players. No. Um, Magic the Gathering, 
I had thought about Magic the Gathering, but my problem with Magic the Gathering is neither of us really have a big enough collection to make it worthwhile. But it's competitive there's, again. There's no point in buying it down there because you're buying stuff blind, you don't know what you've got. Yep. Uh, it really just drained me the thought of it. So much mm -hmm. as I enjoy playing Magic the Gathering, and believe it, Andrea loves playing Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. the prospect of us having to to work through all that and try and build decks and stuff down yeah. there was a, too much work for yeah. too little payoff. Um, you brought me a game called Nightfall. Yes, from AEG. Bring it up and we'll have a quick look at that. This is a deck building game. Yeah, now this I quite like the idea of, uh, yes it's competitive. Uh, it is not... competitive, it is you versus the other person. Uh -huh. But, but I like a, the idea of it because game. everything is in the game. Everything is there, there are no blind buys. I've actually got the original so. Nightfall. My goodness, there's a lot of cards the in there. There's a lot of cards it's Actually, in the add-on is in there as well. Okay, so there's two games in this. Yes, yeah? so there's two sets which are completely independent in there. Yeah. But the whole idea is, I will have my personal library of monsters that I can buy from. Yeah. So I'll have that, say two. Andrea will have the same. And then yeah. you'll have four in the middle. Yeah. From that, you're going to play cards from your hand, because you each get a basic starter deck. Yeah. Buy from your personal library and the communal one. Yeah. To build a deck to beat each other. So it's basically basically you gathering forces of monsters together to go yeah. out to do battle. Because mm -hmm. in this, it's basically the last night has fallen, werewolves, vampires, zombies, the works are coming out of the woodwork what? trying to kill and take over the world and everyone's mm -hmm. fighting for the last of the resources. But you said to beat each other. Yes, you do fight against each other. That makes it competitive again. It does make it competitive again. It's competitive, again. but it's strategic. So my question to you guys is, what would you, what would you recommend? If, if I made my wish list, that I wanted something that was compact, mm -hmm. easy to carry, something that didn't have uh, too many miniatures, didn't have a long setup time, didn't have a long pack away time, and something that was collaborative and narrative. Zombies Keep Out is a good option. Yeah? It is. Because it is cooperative. Now, I think I so this is a cooperative separated game. them out. So you have in that mm -hmm. Zombies Keep Out and Zombies Keep Out. Now, this is, uh, this is uh, one of the Bodgers range from Privateer Press. Yeah. Now, what, that one. What's the minimum player count? Uh, one to six players. Yeah. Oh, so you can play solo on this. Yes. Now, uh, all the components of that are still in there. I still have to separate those out at the minute. Okay. But the whole idea of that is you're the Bodgers. Yeah. You're trapped in your workshop. Mm -hmm. Zombie apocalypse has happened. And now you're all running and scrambling to complete contraptions to kill the horde. So uh, there is a work together aspect to it, and there's a comedy aspect to it as well. Well, do you know what? Maybe I'll try that. Well, it um, might be the one. Are any of the other Bodgers games, because this is part of a range of the Bodgers uh, yes. games, are any of the other ones collaborative or are they um, They're more competitive? Competitive. Uh, mm -hmm. I've played a couple of the other ones. I think Infernal Contraption I've played, it's yeah. competitive. And I've played uh, Wreckage or Scrapyard one. Yeah which is very competitive, but it only gets good whenever you have more than two players. Mm -hmm. I would say that being a cooperative one is your best bet for now. Your yeah. hand always just beamed himself. Other games that are cooperative are Castle Panic, but Castle Panic to me doesn't have, mm -hmm. it doesn't have enough narrative to it for, for it to really engage Ooh. two players for any length of time. Yeah. I have been thinking about Dwarf King's Hold. Could um, be done, but again, that's competitive. Yeah, and for it to be really interesting, you'd probably want to write up a kind of a campaign before you go, mm -hmm. or and then play through it. Yeah, you know, you could probably play. We see this dwarf. Yeah, because uh, somebody has to play the bad monsters. I yeah, no, yeah. guys, zombies are cute. Somebody yeah, somewhere is bound to have encountered this issue and come up with a game for it. If you haven't. There's a massive gap in the market. Maybe somebody could, uh, maybe somebody could check it out. Because uh, if you have ideas, post them below, yeah. and hopefully we can all we can all benefit from that. Because it, it's it's something that has occurred to me over the last week on the run up to going mm -hmm. that of all the games that we're surrounded by, mm -hmm. I couldn't really think of one that was suitable for the this mm. this scenario of the holiday. You could try Zombie Dice. But it is just rolling dice, so it might get repetitive and boring very quickly. Yeah. That's all right for one or two games, but if you're going to be zombie there for a dice of weeks. again, is only fun when there's a load of you and there's and there's drink and stuff like that. Okay, fair go. enough. Okay, um, when myself and Andre on a dry night drinking Coca Cola or something, it's not going to be. It would just get very dull very quick. Yes, okay. it would. Yeah, it doesn't have enough narrative. It doesn't have enough to yeah. to really engage you. Okay, so you need a cooperative book. <laughs> 
a fighting fantasy book and we could sit and read it together. I can give you the Warlock Fire Top Mountain. Uh, I have the complete collection. Oh yeah, there they are there. Mm -hmm. I have the complete collection here anyway. Yeah. Okay guys, look, uh, before we head off, let's announce a competition winner. What were we giving away? Oh, I remember what we were giving away. We were giving away a huge Dread Ball prize, which is too big and too massive for me to sit and read out now. However, I can tell you who won it, and it was Rich Dean. So well done, mate. Uh, go and fill in. Come over to beastofwar.com, fill in the prize request, and the guys will get that over to Mantic, and then hopefully you'll get, uh, you'll get your prize in a few weeks. Uh, for the guys that are waiting on prizes, the... Uh, uh, just to wait a little bit longer, it takes a few weeks to get the prizes organized and sent out. Um, and other than that, that is that. Guys, look, thank you so much for watching. We're back again tomorrow morning for the XLBS. That's the extra long backstage version of this show. We're going to be talking about all kinds of interesting hobby stuff that we've been up to. Um, backstage is the way the Beast of War is supported. Um, we are... Our servers are starting to creak under the weight of all the growth that we're having at the moment. So we're now facing having to upgrade servers. So if you've ever thought of joining backstage, now is a very good time, actually, because it would help us uh, ease that transition to adding uh, load balancers and more servers to the mix. Yeah. Fun times. Yeah, it's, getting, it's getting to that point where it's getting quite complicated to even envisage the server capacity needed. Yes. So, what, so what, you've got bolt-ons to your bolt-ons? Yes, it's all it's all getting very very big mm. um, now. So it's it's starting to it's starting to look very real, you might say. Right, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this Saturday morning. It's always a pleasure having you, and we will see hopefully a ton of you tomorrow morning. Happy gaming, guys. <laughs>